We're thrilled to be here talking about some of our new and upcoming books in all of the delicious genres, science fiction, fantasy, horror, romance, mystery, and romanticy. Keep an eye out for your favorite series and authors, and I hope that we'll be able to introduce you to some books that will become your new favorites. Hold on your seats because we're going to talk about books that just came out, books that are coming out in the rest of 2024, and even some books that are coming out at the beginning of 2025. I'm going to ask my fellow panelists to introduce themselves. And since it's spooky season and uh, we're at the land of the cosplay, I'm going to ask them to tell us about their favorite Halloween costumes. So I'll start. One of my favorite Halloween costumes was one year, the day before Halloween, I decided to dress up as Thor from the Avengers, of course. And I decided to make Mjolnir out of a tissue box. Which worked better than you would think it would. <laughs> and my name is Tyrone Lewis. I'm a marketing manager at Tor Publishing Group. I primarily, <laughs> um, I primarily work on our romantic titles on the Bramble imprint, but I love fantasy, so I am excited to dabble into a little bit more things this upcoming year. And my personal favorite Halloween costume was when I was about seven or eight and I was Mulan and the 90s child in me was living. And my younger sister was an infant and she had the cutest Mushu Costumes. <laughs> I'm Khadija, and I'm an associate publicist at Tor. I work across all of our imprints, but my favorite books that I work on are definitely our fantasy titles. And my fun fact is that last year, me and my roommates, we all dressed up as the Triforce from the Zelda game. Yes. <laughs> and I was the Triforce of Courage. <laughs> Hello, my name is Valeria. I'm a marketing assistant and social media manager for Tor Nightfire, and I also am the face behind our TPG TikTok. I work primarily with horror books, but I get to dip my toes in other genres while making the content for TikTok. And as a true book nerd, I went through a period of like, I don't know, like five years dressing up as a shadow hunter every year. <laughs> hey everybody, my name is Steve Wagner. I'm a senior producer at Macmillan Audio. Woo! I work with a bunch of different imprints at Macmillan, but I do the biggest share of sci-fi and fantasy at Macmillan Audio, so that means I'm working with Tor all the time. And I'm so excited to get to talk to, about the audiobook versions of all of these books you guys are so excited about. My Halloween costume a couple years back, it was really, it didn't go over well. People didn't like it. I was Winnie the Pooh, uh, <laughs> and I had yellow face paint and a black nose and the ears and the red shirt, and that's about it. And it looked really, really bad. <laughs> Before we continue, I want to introduce a video from someone very exciting. If you're into fantasy and you're into audiobooks, there's a good chance this person's voice has been in your ears for about 130 hours these past couple years. Without further ado, a very special hello from Moraine Damadred. I mean, Rosamund Pike. Hello everyone, I'm Rosamund Pike. I play Moraine Damadred in Prime Video's version of The Wheel Time and I also narrate the audiobooks, so my whole life is spent living the old time mother. You have made a place in my heart where I thought there was no room for anything else. You have made flowers grow where I cultivated dust, stones. I'm in the middle of recording Shadow Rising, I'm in the studio right now. I'm sorry I can't be with you, but I cannot wait for you to see what we have in store for all you fans when season three arrives from Prime Video. We have an amazing time shooting the season. I am truly excited about the storylines this season. Moraine goes on a fantastic, challenging, emotional journey, and I feel sure it won't disappoint. And I also can't wait to tell you the expanded version of when I play with all the characters when you listen to The Shadow Rising. So without further ado, have an amazing New York Comic Con, and I hope to see you all very soon. Thor Publishing Group is honored to have amazing authors participating in New York Comic Con this year. We have horror authors, fantasy authors, sci-fi authors, romanticy authors, all here this weekend and we hope it tickles your fancy. Now get your notes up ready, you will not want to miss what we are picking up. And I am up first introducing one of my favorite novellas of the year and this is The Dead Cat Tales Assassins by Peter Jelly Clark. Um, over the course of one night, we are transported into a world of gods and assassins. Avene is one of many skilled assassins that has been resurrected by choosing to serve the god Errol, who is the matron saints of assassins. And the condition of her servitude is that all of her past memories have to be wiped. 
Her only purpose now is to be a badass assassin. During the evening of the Festival of the Clockwork King, she's contracted to kill someone and that sparks a memory she should not have, which thrusts her into a night filled of magic and mystery. If you are looking for an action-packed novella that's also full of humor and is really fast-paced, this is the perfect read for you to pick. It's so good, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> what if you woke up always tired with random bumps and bruises and no doctor could give you an answer? And what if one night you fell asleep with optometer on and discovered you had walked 40,000 steps in the night? The Night Guest by Hildur Nutzdottir is a perfect blend of psychological and possession horror, and it will leave you questioning everything. And I really mean everything. Horror fans rejoice because this novella is already out everywhere. I will say though, if you're a cat lover, maybe you be aware with this one. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> And translated by Mary Robin and Cowell. We love that too. Next up is The Curse by Harper L. Woods, which is one of my favorite paranormal romances on our list. If your comfort shows are the Vampire Diaries or the originals, and you thought Bonnie and Damon had a little bit of tension that should have been yeah. pursued, <laughs> or if you're a big fan of Klaus, this is a series for you. This is picking up right where Coven left off in the Hollow Grove University and is filled with even more action packed paranormal romance. If you like witches, demons, elemental magic, and if you need something to give you in the spooky season vibes and really like a dark academia setting, this is the book for you. Can we give it up for those edges, please? Woo! Yes. <laughs> so raise your hand if you have read House in the Cerulean Sea. <laughs> and how many of you have, keep your hands up if you have read Somewhere Beyond the Sea. Oh. So good news for those of you who haven't. If you stop by our booth at 3335, you don't want to miss this number one New York Times bestseller that is an inspiring sequel that's ignited by the bravery and courage for fighting for the life uh, people want to live. And for those of you who have not read House in the Cerulean Sea, we are also selling that at our booth. And lucky for you, we have recently reissued this book with beautiful blue edges. This was probably my favorite book to work on this year, the audiobook of Somewhere Beyond the Sea. Narrator Daniel Henning. I don't know if I've ever seen a book that was better matched with a narrator. If you've heard it, you know what I'm talking about. It was so spot on that when he auditioned for House in the Cerulean Sea in 2019, he read the first chapter as his audition. And TJ loved it so much that when it came time to actually read the rest of the book, he didn't re-record that first chapter. So that first chapter that's like up on Audible and everything, that is Daniel Henning's audition. Wow, <laughs> I love that fact. All right, The Lies We Conjure is not your typical Rex the Riches story. Thirteen witches, a locked room murder, and two non-magical sisters trapped in a deadly whodunit. I personally would categorize this as Knives Out Sun, the Inheritance Games Moon, and then an Agatha <laughs> O'Long Rising. <laughs> Great meeting. <laughs> Especially if you're waiting patiently or impatiently every Wednesday for those episodes to drop. But I don't know anything about that. Evil and Me. Epic cover art, stunning end papers, and immersive interior art all by the author Brom. Plus, we collaborated with an all-female punk rock band called The Maxines to write music inspired by the band in the book, which you can find on Spotify now. And the music is perfect to set the rock and roll reading mood as you join Ruby in her journey to convince hundreds of people to chant a spell to set her free from the demon that has possessed her. Ruby did not get the memo that if you see a ring, you do not put it on. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to The Maxines, we were able to use that music in the audiobook version as well. There are scenes where they're writing the song, recording the song, performing the song, it's on the radio, and we have different versions of the song that they gave us so that we can use them on the program in those specific scenes. It's very, very cool. So it's a whole musical experience, really. Basically. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Since it is spooky season, here's more horror for all of you. If you're a fan of Tenerife Do and Sylvia Moreno Garcia, boy, do we have a book for you. Johnny Compton's Devil Skills Devils is a Southern Gothic horror novel full of angels, devils, and vampires, and in good nightfire fashion, a battle of evil versus evil. Get ready for some violence, terror, dread, again, perfect blend for this spooky season. And Johnny's here this weekend, right? Johnny is here. Excellent. And this audiobook is narrated by Imani Jade Powers, who's actually just on Broadway playing uh, Delphi Diggory in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Any Studio Ghibli fans in the audience here today? Good taste. Um, I was really excited when I first heard about this book because it was compared to Princess Mononoke, which is personally one of my favorites. 
The naming song is a surreal, magical adventure that takes you through a world where words have disappeared, causing danger to lurk in every corner, as there's nothing more dangerous than an unnamed thing. And I have to read this one now because I didn't, I didn't get to produce this one, but I asked the producer and the narrator what they thought of it, and the narrator, Marisa Collin, she says, and I quote, it's one of the most beautiful books I've read in my 14 years of narrating. And she's read like 300 books, yeah. so that means a lot. High praise, very high praise. Yeah. <laughs> it's me again. Um, when you are continuously being followed by a ghost that you need to get rid of, who are you going to call? <laughs> Wrong. Close. <laughs> Close. The gay supernatural lion. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine is Haunted is a fun queer Latinx take on Ghostbusters from beloved author Mark Ashiro. You do not want to miss this perfect Halloween read that Percy Jackson star Rick Riordan has promised it'll haunt you in the best ways. I need a gay supernatural alliance, please. Thank you. <laughs> take some lesbian pirates, Woo! a quest yeah! for dragon eggs, uh, lovers to enemies, <coughs> and some tea related puns, and you have. A pirate's life for tea. <laughs> this cozy adventure romance is Our Flag Means Death meets Bookshops and Bone Dust. Uh, yes, I love that combination so much. Hyant and Reyna are on the hunt for dragon eggs to save their hometown, but of course, they run into pirates instead. And it's complicated. This relationship is a relationship wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I love that too much. Sorry, guys. <laughs> a Pirate's Life for Tea just came out on October 1st, and coming in March is Tea You at the Altar, where Kyant and Raina have to navigate the ultimate maelstrom, their own wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome to Starling House. Enter if you dare. This book is atmospheric, it's chilling, and it's so heartfelt. I was so captivated while reading. Generally, shout out to our audiobook team. The world building really makes you feel like you're in the cursed town in a haunted house. You know, with a mysterious boy looking around and he's kind of cute. But who doesn't love an unlikable female protagonist who deep down just really wants someone to take care of her for once? That really sort of us. This is a perfect book for readers who want to partake in the spooky season vibes, but draw the line at being outright scared. And the paperback is out now featuring, you know it, featuring purple spades, right edges. Defying by Chloe C. Penaranda, the serpent in the wings of night meets shadow and bone that is loosely inspired by Greek mythology. Our girl, Astrea, has no memory, and she's being held captive by a very ruthless king. And in her quest to find the truth, she is led into the Libertatum, which is a series of trials that the five human kingdoms have to participate in to fight for a year of basically safety from the vampires. Of course, your girl doesn't really know what's going on, so she links up with a very brooding, sexy, dark vampire named Knight, because why not? <laughs> If you want a full dark romantic fantasy full of vampires, secrets, magic, and lots of forbidden love, you don't want to miss out on this book. And both of these beautiful hardcovers have stenciled celestial edges. And stay tuned for the night just to find it comes out January 28th, 2025. These are some books where I genuinely don't know how to put them on the shelf. Like, yes. I don't know if I want to put them out. <laughs> no. Also, if you unwrap them, there's more things and papers, the cover itself. So definitely go check it out at the booth. Um, Get out. <laughs> It's honestly one of the most beautiful books I've ever, ever, Real. Real. <laughs> ever worked on or picked up. And me again. Um, this is yep. Nightmare Before yeah. Christmas yeah. <laughs> by Sarah Rash, which is t Tim Burton meets red, white, and royal blue in a very imaginative, quirky rom-com where the Prince of Christmas falls for the very off-limits Prince of Halloween. This is laugh out loud funny, but also is balanced with like the most tender, sweet, queer romance. Ooh. <laughs> and it's the perfect cozy fantasy to cuddle up with both for the Halloween spooky season and also the holiday season coming up later this year. Okay. And in case you missed it, here's the cover for the third book. Oh, yes. yes. Third book. Se oh. Second book. You're getting us all overexcited over here. <laughs> Yes, check out the next book, which is Go Luck Yourself, which has beautiful green sprayed edges and is coming in March for St. Patrick's Day. Okay. From the author of A Marvelous Light, this book is the cozy, low stakes of Legends and Lattes and the scorching bodyguard fantasy of Jennifer L. Armentrout's From Blood and Ash in an enemies to lovers romance. 
dutiful heir to his family's struggling business, Madness J hires a swordsman for the expected sword challenge at his upcoming marriage ceremony. <laughs> and the swordsman he hires is a part-time con artist and full-time charming menace, Luca Pierre. We've got intrigue, sabotage, and sword fights aplenty. If you're ever someone who goes, now kiss, when watching an intense fight scene, then this is a book for you. <laughs> The chemistry for this one is off the charts, like from the first chapter, immediately. Highly recommend. And up next is me again. Um, this is A.K. Larkwood meets Christopher Bowman in a novel from award-winning Korean author Soon Il Kim. I was so excited to get my hands on this book, mainly because I've heard so many great things about this author, but also because it's translated by Anton Herr, which is one of my favorite translators. He did the BTS book, if you know, you know. <laughs> Blood of Old Kings is the start of an epic fantasy series full of necromancy, twisted magic, murder, and dragons. And I don't think you can ask for more from a book. I love that book so much, by the way. <laughs> I suck the excitement, yes. <laughs> Um, so for fans of Travis Baldry, I have some very exciting news. Um, we will be reissuing Legends and Lattes in Bookshops and Bone Dust in hardcover later yeah. this month. And it has beautiful stenciled edges. I love the way that these look. I like the old ones too, but I think I'm going to have to have both of them now. Um, <laughs> We love Travis Baldry. He is so unusually talented. He writes these books, he narrates the audiobooks, he records himself, he edits it, he masters it, he does everything, he just gives it to me finished. So he makes my job extremely easy. And he's a real triple threat over there. Yeah. 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 And, <laughs> Any Broadbent fans in the crowd? <laughs> Um, I'm so excited to announce that New York Times bestselling author and TikTok sensation, Carissa Brogman, who was here this weekend, so we have a couple of signed books still at the booth, which is booth 3335, <laughs> um, available. This is her brand new novel in the Crowns of Nyaxia series, and this is a never-before-released novel where Court of Thorns and Roses meets Dante's Inferno. In this new story arc, we deep dive into the dangerous kingdom of the House of Shadow. This is an epic fantasy romance full of love and treachery between mortals and gods, and we might have a couple of arcs lying around tomorrow, so definitely go to the booth and see if you can snag one. If not, it comes out November 19th, and you're definitely going to want to read this one. The conclusion of Susan Dennard's Luminary series arrives in one month, and the ending of Haunting Moon, I don't know about you guys, but it left me with so many questions. <laughs> and y'all, the Susan deliver on this installment. This one is for all my Vampire Diaries fans, all my Shadow Hunters fans. We have a slow burn romance, a werewolf, monster hunters, and in this particular one, a masquerade ball. I know, the drama. <laughs> I love a good ball. Fall, the Fall of Ruin and Wrath by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Um, is coming out in paperback on November 12th and will be featuring beautiful blue spray edges. This is breathtaking suspense and scorching romance that meets in an immersive new fantasy from the mega best-selling force that is JLA. I don't want to get into too many details to avoid spoilers for this one, but I feel like the tagline for this book says it all, and it's she lives by her intuition and he feeds on her pleasure. So if, you oh, want, yeah. if you're looking for something spicy on the romanticy side, this is the book for you. Here it is! Well, almost here. <laughs> the long-awaited explosive climax to the first arc of the number one New York Times best-selling Stormlight Archive, the iconic epic fantasy masterpiece that has sold more than 10 million copies from none other than the acclaimed best-selling author Brandon Sanderson. This is, yes, <laughs> shout out for Brandon. This is 1,344 pages of wow. epic fantasy <laughs> yep. You heard it here first, folks. And it is coming out in on December 6th of this year. Please note that is a Friday release date, which is the first time I've ever heard of that in book publishing. But the good news is that that means you have the whole weekend to read the book. <laughs> Accordingly, yes. <laughs> All almost 1,400 pages. And uh, at, as a result, can you guess how long the audiobook is? 50 hours. <laughs> 63, that's right. Yeah. It is officially the longest audiobook Macmillan Audio has ever uploaded. I, I mean that. 
So, legendary narrators Michael Kramer and Kate Redding are back to close out the first half of the Stormlight Archive. Due to the sheer length and complexity of these, this, these books and this world, it takes like two months for them to, to record the whole book, and the whole production team has to study up on the massive pronunciation guide and all the character voices and all that. But it's uploaded, it's done, all that hard work is behind us, and we can't wait for you to hear it. Okay, so I have some trivia for all of you Sanderson fans. Can you tell me which book in the Stormlight Archive series is the longest? This one! <laughs> you are correct, he's doing his Brandon Sanderson best to make each book longer and better. <laughs> Alright! There's all the Suburna Buff fans here, excellent! Well, I'm happy to tell you that this series is available for the first time ever in both paperback and omnibus form. Woo! Coming out in January, the three omnibuses will include all the novellas in the Murderbot series. I suggest buying them for all of your friends so they can read the books before the adaptation from Apple TV Plus comes out. Woo! No, I don't know the air date for the streaming series, but you'll know when I do because I will be screaming about it. <laughs> so much screaming. <laughs> yes, join me in my screaming. <laughs> do you guys want to hear more about TJ Clune? Yes! I'm excited to tell you that we will be releasing his next book this February, The Bones Beneath My Skin. When an extraordinary young girl is on the run from cultists in the government, she seeks refuge in the most unlikely of places. Fans of Stranger Things will especially adore this fun action-packed thriller. Infinity Alchemist is dark academia fan fantasy at its finest. In the sequel, Chaos King promises even more of our beloved polycule Ash, Ramsey, and Callum <laughs> because a real love triangle connects at all points. Yeah! <laughs> But will Ash be able to keep his relationships together and stop the world from falling apart? That's like no six at all. <laughs> Infinity Alchemist is out in paperback in February of next year, and in April comes Chaos King in hardcover. Very exciting. I heard that it was a really long process casting the audiobook for this. They wanted the exact right person for it. it took a long time, and they got Wes Haas to record it. Did an amazing job, and he's actually getting ready to record Chaos King in a couple weeks in our studios downtown. I love that you brought up polyamory because there, there's, there's triangles on the cover. It's not subtle. It's, it's there. It's oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Dragon of Black Glass is the third and penultimate book in the New York Times best-selling Moonfall series coming out in February. This is from Thriller Master James Rollins, which, fun fact, I recently learned, James Rollins actually started his career writing epic fantasy, and then he just got sidetracked writing thrillers. As you did. <laughs> Apparently. But he's back now with an apocalypse adventure tale. In this book, Nyx and her allies have to find an ancient weapon buried untold millennia ago before she goes mad, or the moon crashes into the earth and destroys it. So, totally normal stakes. And this audiobook is narrated by one of my absolute favorite narrators, Nicola Barber. She actually pretty much doesn't do audiobooks anymore, but she always comes back for this when when, when there's a new book in this series. All right. Ooh. A wicked sorceress and a nerdy wizard teaming up to work in a magical library? Say less. Um, <laughs> Boy the Witch Queen by Stephanie Burgess comes out on February 18th, 2025. And this book gave me so many Ella Enchanted vibes in the best way. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I wanted. But with more magic. But it was such a delightful romp of a fantasy. It's slow burn, the world building is super, super rich, you're fully immersed in the story, and who doesn't love a lovable nerdy wizard? And this will have beautiful turquoise spray edges, so mark your calendars for February. You're definitely not going to want to miss this one. And now that we've mentioned Ella Enchanted, Steve, this is our formal request. Do you put some singing in the audiobook then? <laughs> okay, taking notes. <laughs> All right! Woo! 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 In her quest for tour publishing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey guys, everyone works really hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in her quest for TPG domination, we are so excited to announce that Kingfisher is coming to Bramble, Ooh. our romantic Ooh. imprint. Hard is a cozy and delicious bodyguard fantasy romance. Yeah. Ooh. 
Our main character, Hala, inherits a beautiful estate where an ancient sword collects dust on the wall. Upon unsheathing the sword, a man appears in her bedroom. <laughs> Sarkis is an immortal warrior trapped in an enchanted steel prison no. sworn to protect the sword's wielder. Even unusual ones like Hala. <laughs> this beautiful hardcover edition features bright edges, a foil stamp on the casing, and custom end papers. And Kingfisher will also return to her brand of fairy tale dark reimaginings with Hemlock and Silver out next summer. She is busy. Yeah. This is a Snow White story steeped in poison, intrigue, and treason of the most magical kind. And of course, the hardcover edition will feature sprayed edges, fellow stamp on the casing, and custom end papers illustrated by none other than Kingfisher herself. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah! So if you were obsessed with this is how you use the time war, like I was, then I have really great news for you. We will be publishing Amal's solo debut here at TPG, The River Has Roots. This enchanting story follows two sisters who are heirs to an extraordinary stewardship on the edge of fairies. But what happens when one of them falls in love with someone with the, from the land beyond? Find out in March. Hmm. There are no words to describe how good this one is, guys. No Seriously, <laughs> it's, it's like nothing you've read. It's so unique. I love it so much. And when I saw you guys were publishing this book, I jumped on it. You know, no other producer was going to get to do this one. This one, <laughs> this one was mine. So we had some very cool ideas for it. We have some original music for the book coming, Ooh. some light sound design, and a very, very cool narrator who I can't tell you about just yet. Ooh. Yes, there are some fans. So for those who haven't heard about this book, this novella is very cool for several reasons. First, it's by the author of the Hugo Award-winning science fiction novel, A Memory Called Empire. Yeah. Yeah. Second, it's already been nominated for the Hugo Award as well. Third, it's an impossible locked room murder mystery with a super smart AI house. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I love that concept. No. It's good. So don't worry if you missed the limited first run. Tor.com will be releasing again on March 11th. Smart house, but darker. Yeah. Smart house, but murder. But murder. Yeah. Yeah. Sprinkle it in. Yeah. Okay, I really wanted to talk about this one because I am a big fan of Olivia Waite, and when I heard we had a new novel from her, I immediately started reading it, and I immediately loved it. If anyone else really loves a murder mystery with a sapphic element, yeah, yeah, I cannot recommend this highly enough. This is Miss Marple in space, specifically oh. on an interstellar generation ship. Death on the ship should be impossible because memories are stored and downloaded to bodies as needed. But then someone starts purposely deleting minds. I know, it's so great. <laughs> so, Detective Auntie Dorothy Gentleman is on the case. Say that three times. <laughs> <laughs> no, you. <laughs> so... Have you ever wondered what would happen if the moon turned to cheese? <laughs> depends on the cheese. <laughs> Someone in the front said depends on the cheese. <laughs> I have great news for you. John Scalzi has got you covered in his upcoming novel, When the Moon Hits Your Eye. Follow humanity from the billionaires to your average teenager as they wrap their head on the events that unfold in this kaleidoscopic novel that goes to all the places you would expect, but so many places you wouldn't. Okay, is one of the places it goes to cheese puns? <laughs> Not a booty to tell. All right, all Ooh. of you Blake fans, I have some good news. She is here this weekend. So you will notice there is a cover that is not on the slide. That is not a mistake. That is a trivia question. Can anyone tell me what name she writes YA novels under? Alexine Farrell Fama. <laughs> Excellent job. Yes. Uh, so Twelfth Night, her YA novel, came out earlier this year and is a YA rom com reimagining of Shakespeare's classic play. Only in this version, Viola meets Orsino in a definitely not quite Game of Thrones inspired online MMO RPG. <laughs> I know, it's perfect. All of you Blake's latest adult book, January's, is a lush collection of short stories about love, magic, and betrayal, of course, because it's all of you Blake. I read it earlier this year, and I am still being haunted by these stories, so 
do read. And then I get to tell you about her next upcoming book, Gifted and Talented. Are there any fans of the TV show Succession here? Yeah, raise your hands. All right. Well, I have good news for you. This is Gifted and Talented is basically Succession, but with magic. This is a story of three siblings who, upon the death of their billionaire tech CEO father, have to contend with their long festering rivalries and the crushing weight of their unrealized potential. I love working with Olive Blake. Did you know that she actually reads one of the stories in January? Oh. If you see her this weekend, ask her about that. It's a very interesting reason why she read that one. And she actually has a, a part in her book along with you in the ether as well. And actually I have a part in that book too. I read the introduction. Oh. I, I put in 10 minutes for standing ovation after that. <laughs> we can skip that. Um, you got one earlier. <laughs> that's true. Um, but this one, Gifted and Talented, is going to be read by the amazing Eunice Wong. Mm -hmm. Okay, first, a little commotion for the edges in this cover. Oh. All right, picture House of the Dragon, but if the Targaryens could actually shift into dragons, oh. and they also ruled ancient Rome, and you have Firebird by Juliet Cross. Oh. <laughs> I have been such a fan of Juliet's past works, and I've been, I was so thrilled that she's on the Bramble list now, and for readers to get their hands on the first book in a new series coming out this April. So mark your calendars for April 8th. 2025, you were not going to want to miss the start of this very highly anticipated series. Woo! Woo! Eva <laughs> returns to her reimagined world of The Great Gatsby in her new standalone novel, Don't Sleep with the Dead. Nick Carraway has found a life and a living watching the mad magical spectacle of New York City in the late 30s. He's good at watching and even better at pretending. Pretending to be straight, pretending to be human, pretending he's forgotten the events of that summer in 1922. But then he encounters the ghost of Jay Gatsby, who won't let him forget. And maybe Nick doesn't want to. Mm -hmm. Does he follow the advice of the title? No. Who's to say? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're a horror fan. Well, for our last title of the day, we have a very exciting announcement. In this month of October, the pinnacle of spooky season, <laughs> I am absolutely thrilled to share that Nightfire has acquired none other than renowned horror author Mira Grant. Oh, oh! A Shannon McGuire. Yeah! Oh! That's right, the author of Feed and Parasite has two brand new books coming out from Nightfire. Her first new books in seven years. The first one, coming out in 2025, is Overgrowth. All right, can everyone do a drum roll for me, please? We're about to reveal the cover for the first time. Ta-da! Overgrowth is an inhalation meets Day of the Trifids in this dark end of the world alien invasion tale. And read more about it at reactor.com on Monday. 